Hey guys, it's Mike here. I just want to welcome you to week two of our You Are Here series. Last week we heard from Adam Ramsey, who's our Hartford Youth Coordinator. And this week, in just a few moments, we're going to be hearing from Juan Munoz, who's our Greater Bridgeport Area Youth Coordinator. And he's about to bring the word, all right? So you're going to want to make sure you have your Bible. Make sure you have a notebook and a pen ready to go. You're going to want to take notes during this. You're not going to want to miss one moment. With that being said, let's go. All right, Vox Youth, it's so good to be with you guys. I've missed you guys so much. Before I start with the sermon, I wanted to really quick just thank Mike for this awesome opportunity. He is an awesome, awesome, awesome leader, you guys. We really have an awesome leader in our midst. And so right now, I want you, wherever you're at, to give him a round of applause for Mike. Good job, Mike. We love you and your fake beard. All right, so for today, we are in a... In a, I was about to say devotional series. We're, we're, we're in this with this new sermon series that is called You Are Here, but I'm not going to tell you the end of the title. I'm going to tell you the end of the title at the end. All right. Our base text of today is called is 1 Timothy 1.12. And it says this, but I am not ashamed for I know whom I have believed. This is Paul, speak, this is Paul speaking. And I'm convinced that he's able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. Hmm. Let's pray. Jesus, right now I just give you this time. I'm asking you that through this screen you would just touch the lives of every student, that lives would be crampled in Jesus' name, that Father, that you would just come in and make us new again in your presence, God. I ask you that your word would just cut deep and by the power of the Holy Spirit that we would never be the same ever again. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Men. All right. So before I start, I wanted to bring you guys all the way back to the middle of winter. In 2016, I was playing soccer for my for my university team, and this is what's going on. I'm gonna paint this picture for you. I was in the middle of winter season, and for soccer players, you know this. During winter, during the spring, it's conditioning time, and I'm a goalkeeper. Well, I was a goalkeeper. Excuse me. And uh, people say that goalkeepers are lazy, and that is really true. We don't like to run. And I was in the middle of conditioning season, guys, and my coach was making me run in the middle of winter. I can just remember I left my locker room, and the wind just was crushing against my cheeks, and everything was just frozen, and I didn't want to be there. I was like, why am I in Connecticut, God? Why did you bring me to the North Pole? I'm Colombian. I'm supposed to be sitting by the beach somewhere, playing like soccer with my, with my, I was about to say, okay, whatever, with something to drink that is not alcoholic. <laughs> you get what I mean, guys? And I start, and all we're doing, we're not even playing soccer, we're just running. The, the, the weather is horrible, it's snowing, it's freezing. I can't feel my fingers, I have gloves on. It was so cold outside that it's literally burning my chest as I'm running. The environment is tough. I feel like my body is breaking down. You're doing one sprint, two sprints, three sprints, four sprints, five sprints in the cold, and there's a moment when you stop thinking and everything is just a gut reaction. And I literally feel how my body was being weakened and, and I, didn't even have, I didn't even have the mental capacity to even think. I was just in go mode and react mode and the only thing that I was thinking was, when is this going to end? And my soccer coach was the worst ever because I'm sorry soccer coach, <laughs> coach, <laughs> coach don't I, I'm sorry if you're seeing this. But he wouldn't even tell us when it would end. It would just last forever. I literally did not know. It was until he just blew the whistle that we knew that we were done. And I, I, I wonder if sometimes impatience, our lack of, of maybe our belief that when sometimes our faith feels weak, or just the trials that come around us like a storm, like are they really going against our core belief of the goodness of God in circumstances and trials in our life? Like, is it sometimes that we feel like myself when we were in that, when I was in that soccer field, just sprinting, just going through the motions, going through the trials of life, being intimidated by this storm? Nevertheless, we feel like we just have to push through and we're just wondering, when is this going to end? I, I feel that I'm just stuck here and I don't feel a way out. I don't know if you guys can relate, but I can definitely can't. 
with trials in life when mom and dad don't have the enough finances to provide for me and and I feel stuck maybe a little bit incompetent when I literally I'm stuck in a situation that's beyond my control maybe it's a relationship maybe it's a friend that told you something that really hurt your feelings or or maybe it's just it's just a situation out of control whether it's money relationships maybe something happened at church and 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 you start feeling like doubt just starts crippling in inside maybe it's a traumatic event that happened in your country and you're kind of you're just in the moment that you're doubting it is god really good is, is, am I really going to get out of here? I feel stuck in this place. You know, I, I, I just wonder. I just wonder what can happen in that moment that can really, like, get you through it. What kind of biblical truth can we have in moments like this that can allow us to see a light at the end of the tunnel? And what I realize, what what Paul was telling to Timothy was this know not only what have you believed but know in whom you have believed know in whom you have believed know the character of the God in whom you have trusted and this is what I'm telling you guys that in the middle of that storm maybe you're sprinting and you have this storm around you and you have and you feel like your body's crumbling down and you literally do not know how long this is gonna take know this that God has a plan for your life God has literally paced you in that place it was God God's idea to begin with that you were placed that I was placed in Connecticut in that soccer field in that very own moment and I knew that if it was his idea he's gonna bring me through it I, I, I it was just the raw reality that I just believed the truth in that moment that if God if this was God's idea he's going to take me through it you know, I, I, I wonder, I, I remember one day when I was just back home in Colombia, we were in the swim pool, right? And we were just swimming and there was this big, big, big trampoline. And my dad was just waiting down the pool and he just told me, Juan, jump, jump, I got you. And there was fear coming against me. I was like, man, I don't really know if my dad has the ability to catch me. I don't know how he's going to do it. But one thing I knew, that he was going to catch me if I decided to trust him. I decided to trust his character, that he was strong enough. I might not know exactly how he's going to do it, but I know that he's going to do it at the end. And there's one person in the scriptures, the, exact, the, the, the author of our base text of today. His name was Paul. And he went through a lot more than I did. He definitely did a lot more than just going through some sprints in the middle of winter. You guys want to know what the stuff that he actually had to go through is insane. In 1 Corinthians 11, 16, it starts giving me a long list. Now, I don't want to lose you, so stay with me. Jacob, stay with me. Nehemiah, stay with me. Check this out. This is what he did. Trinity, don't look at, your, don't look at Instagram right now. It's not time for you to look at Instagram. You have to stay with me, okay? This is the stuff that Paul had to endure during this time. He was whipped, he was whipped without number. He faced death again and again and again. Five different times the Jewish leaders gave him 39 lashes. 39! Three times he was beaten with rods. Once he was stoned. He was three times shipwrecked. Man, we can't even handle 40 days in quarantine. This guy was shipwrecked. Once I spent, he spent a whole night and a day adrift at sea. He has traveled many long journeys. He has faced dangers from rivers and from robbers. He has faced the danger of his own people, the Jews as well as from the Gentiles. He faced danger in cities and in the deserts and in the seas. And he has faced danger with believers and with unbelievers. He has gone through long and sleepless nights. Sometimes he was hungry. Sometimes he was thirsty. Sometimes he went without food. Can you believe that he decided to go through all of this? Because he had a mission in mind. Throughout all this time, he could have believed, he could have chosen not to preach the gospel. That was the mission of his life. To preach this gospel to the Gentiles, to the people who were not the Jews and back in the day. And nevertheless, he decided to persevere through so many trials. Why? Because he had a mission in mind that was greater than all the trials that he could have faced. He knew this. God, this is your idea. 
it has been your idea to call me to preach this message. It wasn't his. And because of that, he knows that God's going to bring him through it. So no matter what he was going to face, he knew, although I'm here, God's going to bring me through it. You know, he was definitely going through a rough environment. Paul, I, I just wrote, I just read it to you guys. He didn't have money to maybe spend, have food all the days of his life. He was shipwrecked time and time again. He was going through tr hardships, through trials. He was facing persecution by everyone. <laughs> Mike is telling me that I have to speed up. I will speed up. He was going through persecutions of, of many kinds. He was going through a really rough environment. But the Bible says this. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Paul knew at the core of his heart that no matter what was the atmosphere outside, there was a greater one inside, and that is Christ Jesus. He knew of the power of Jesus. Come on, this is Jesus who we're talking about, guys. This is the Jesus that rose from the dead at the third day, that he literally shook off death. When he spoke to a dead man, the dead man had nothing else to do but to rise up and walk. He, 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 he multiplied bread for 10,000 people who were just having five loaves, and, five loaves of bread and two fish. I'm talking about Jesus that literally steps into the natural and makes things, makes the supernatural out of the natural. Jesus is so powerful and Paul knew it. He knew is the greater one that is in me than he who is in the world. He is greater than any kind of trial that I can face. And that leads to the second point that even in the midst of trials, he counted all joy. Why? Because he understood that trials are tests for God to actually be God in our lives. They're just opportunities for God to be who he has called, who, who he wants to be in our lives. The, the Bible says in James, I don't want to butcher the verse, but it says to count it all joy in the midst of many trials. Because our faith produces perseverance, letting perseverance have its full effect in you, that you may be perfect, lacking nothing. I want to encourage you guys that tests, that trials that we might face are just opportunities for God to be the God in our lives, the God that He really is. A stepping stone for us to achieve all that He has called us to achieve in our lives. See it like this. You have a big finish line at the end of the day for your life. You have a mission, but in, the, in order for you to fulfill that mission, there are trials after trials after trials. And I'm telling you, God wants you to succeed and wants you to finish that race that He has called every single one of you to live in. But you have to live in the reality that there's going to be trials ahead. But don't be weary because He has already overcome the world. And he has already orchestrated these trials to just be tests for you to go from one level to the other. And the last one, Mike, I, I, Mike is behind the camera and I need to talk to Mike about this because we were just talking about something. And I have to make this statement. This is really important for me to make because I don't want to ignore people who maybe you've been going through this for a really, really long time. And you thought, okay, maybe this will last a month. Maybe this will last just two months. You know, God is good. He will bring me through it eventually. But it lasted one year, two years, three years. And suddenly, your trial has become your identity. All of a sudden, the environment that you're facing has become who you are. And I want to tell you today, I don't know who you are. Maybe you're caught up in a cycle of sin, pornography. Maybe you're indulged in low self-esteem. In mediocrity and just going through the motions in a numbness lifeless Christian life and you're like I don't know how to shake this off one it feels like it's become me because the trials in our life had literally become our identity but I'm here to tell you that God has stepped into the picture to tell you today that yes although you are here you're not here forever that's the title of the message Although you are here, you're not here forever because Jesus has stepped into the middle of our situation. No matter how long it has taken to, to reign victorious over sin and death, that's what He did at the cross. He conquered your sin, my sin. 
and rose again at the third day, giving us an opportunity to have intimacy with God again and has given us His identity as son and daughters of the living God. And I'm telling you right now, you are a son, you are a daughter of the living God. You have been created to be a vessel of His glory. You are created with power. And I want to kind of like grab into, go into the camera right now and shake your head and tell you, you are blessed. <laughs> you are great. And God is with you no matter how long it takes. Now, I'm about to be done. I'll, I'll even shut this down. I don't know if I have anything else to say. Whatever. I'll tell you guys this. That Jesus steps into the middle. And this is the, the, mo the coolest thing in the whole world. That even the trials, when you're facing them with Jesus, Jesus becomes bigger than the trials. So no matter how long you're actually facing the trial, just like Paul did, Paul was decapitated. <laughs> People, he faced trials until he died. But he realized this, Jesus is bigger than my trials. And I don't care if I go through them until the day I die. My Jesus is bigger and he has already defeated the trials so I can face even death itself and shake it off because I am here but not forever I'm living for eternity I just saw something move that was really weird let me pray for you guys father I pray that you would bless all these Vox youth students I pray that this message would literally rip them apart and build them up again in your presence God and I thank you for just how incredible they are I bless them in Jesus' name. I declare prophetically even, you are here, but not forever. There is hope for your life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Rigadine, bro. Ha! Oh, we love you, Jesus. So grateful. There is a sound I love to hear It's the sound of the Savior's robe As he walks into the room Where people pray Where we hear praise as he hears faith oh. Come on, we have a God who inhabits the praises of his people Oh, we worship you, Jesus The sound I love to hear is the sound of the Savior's robe as he walks into the room where people pray, where we hear worship, he hears faith. We have faith right now, we have faith right now, come on. Sing his praise aloud, sing his praise aloud. Come on, make this your prayer. Awake my soul and sing, sing his praise aloud, sing his praise aloud. sound that changes things, the sound of his people on their knees. Wake up, you celebrating, it's time to worship him. Awake my soul and sing, sing his praise aloud, sing his praise
sing his praise aloud. Sing his praise aloud. Come on, make this your prayer. Oh, awake my soul and sing. Sing his praise aloud. Sing his praise aloud. We are singing about a God who's made a way for us. Oh, we believe it. Come on, let your faith rise in this moment. Oh, we believe he's made a way for us. Come on, we sing. What an incredible word from Juan. And you know, as he talked about our hope, or what's next, right? Is our, our, our faith is not anchored in right now. It's not anchored in those sprints. What it's anchored in is the character of God. It's anchored in who the Father is. So you know, my prayer for you guys is that during this time, you would cling to who God is. And in him, in his character, in what he offers you, in the words that he's spoken, you would find hope, and you would find peace, and you would find restoration to the places where there may have been death. You know, I don't want to preach again. Uh, Juan just finished, and it was awesome. But I just want to let you know I'm praying for you guys. I love you. I cannot wait to start meeting in person. But in the meantime, if there's anything you need, any reason you want to reach out, please do. It's never a bother. It's never a burden. It is a privilege and a pleasure to hear from you guys and to be able to have conversations. So reach out anytime you want. Uh, with that being said, head on over to Instagram Live because we're going to be meeting for a real-time discussion with you guys. We're going to have some fun and maybe answer some questions if you have them. But we will see you guys there in just a few moments.